this is awful. Look at that. Beat you. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no. This is not designer. <laughs> designer holes. I did not buy this shirt with this hole already made. If you want, you can bring your clothes around to us and we can do that for you for a good price. We'll wear them in for you. Yeah. And, uh, you can Make them look like workwear. Work. Yeah. Real workwear. You can have that real designer yeah. workwear look, pre worn by a farmer. Mm -hmm. Right, what are we going to do today? What well, work are we going to do on the farm today? Today, I would really like to tackle making a decent hay feeder for the goats. Going to try and do that today. I've seen an old bit of cot. We have a lot of pieces of things lying around on the farm and someone farm, might farm see tats. that. Yeah, farm tat. Farm someone tats. might see that as mess or trash, but actually it's not. It's like Farm Your Challenge. Farm Your Challenge. It's really quite fun when you have to make something. Yeah. You wander around the farm and you try and look at things and think, could that be part of the thing that I'm going to bodge together and build. Yeah, so yeah it's great, great fun trying to make, is, make yeah. something new for the farm out of waste yeah. materials or stuff that was left here by the previous owners, stuff that we inherited when we didn't want to inherit yeah. it. Yeah, so we're going to go do a little search around the farm, get the pieces we need. I think there's some bits of pallet that have been broken up. We're going to gather those things, go into the buyer um, and build that. The other thing I've got to do is move the cheeses. This is going to be in the goat parlor, which is where she has her cheese cave at the moment, which is a repurposed fridge. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to be turning some cheeses, so we'll mm -hmm. have a look at that. And then there's a kind of round two of me trying to deal with this kind of uh, stone in Mandy's teeth, this calcium mm. deposit or milk stone. Um, my next plan is that I was thinking that um, I'm pretty sure um, magnesium helps to kind of break down calcium um, so uh, I'm gonna be giving her a nice harmless Epsom salt teat bath Ooh. yeah <laughs> in an attempt rather than to try and pull you know rather than to try and cut the tail of the um, or break the tail of the calcium deposit in the teat which I've been too nervous to do very hard so I don't think that's that's why I've not been very successful um, and by the way, I haven't caused her any damage. There's been no blood, no redness. No, she's um, been amazing. She's, she's been really good. A goat will tell you if it's especially if Mandy yeah, will tell you. Kick, yeah. kick and fuss, yeah. and yeah. if they're not enjoying it, they 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 they'll tell us. And she yeah. hasn't shown any signs no. of that. No, I think she'll like it. Yeah. A nice warm tea who, bath. Who wouldn't love a <laughs> nice warm tea bath? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So my next idea is that actually maybe if I give her daily kind of um, Epsom salt um, baths for her teeth. Um, magnesium goes into the body best through the skin, transdermally, rather than taken anyway. So if I do that, it should hopefully actually soak into the wall of the teeth and start to hopefully at least reduce the size of the calcium deposit so it's not in the way of the milk flow as much. That's another short thing to do today. Yeah, quite animal related and that's a common theme at the moment at this yeah. time of the year with our climate. You know, the, the garden is not a huge amount to be done and especially when there's snow on the ground, we can't, we can't do yeah. anything. <laughs> All right, so that's what we're hoping to do today. The sun is shining, so we're gonna get out there and get on with it. Shall I do like a American cop show? <laughs> Cheese. I mean, they're pretty <laughs> colourful. There's all these different communities living on them right now, and they're all battling to kind of take over the curd eating job. So, the longer I leave it, the more clear it will be which one is winning. But these aren't as blue as the softer cheeses that um, you see already because these are hard cheeses. I've been changing the conditions a lot. Uh, so it, 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 it means that I actually just have no idea really what, no, I couldn't repeat this. There's a couple of bits that I would say aren't looking great, like mold wise, but I think it's okay to leave them and hope that they just die over time. There's just so many different types of mold on here right now that I'm quite just interested to see you know, these moulds aren't great on other things and then they are okay on cheese, you know, so you just don't know and that's how people discover stuff, isn't it, anyway. Mm. So I'm happy to leave them. Okay. Um, I'll look at these, I'll wash my hands, they've probably got bits of blue and I'm trying to make it so that these don't go blue, that's why they're in a box. 
Um, so I'm just trying to stop the transfer of the blue, um, what is it called? Penicillium Rock 40, I think. Yeah, but they smell like cheese. That smells like a cheese shop when it I- It does. So that can't be bad. You know, no. trust the nose is the best for the cheese. The nose, nose. You can tell when something smells like cheese. It might smell like stinky feet, but it smells like cheese because cheese can smell yeah. like stinky feet because that's actually the same uh, cultures that you might find on a stinky foot. And that sounds gross, but it's true. That's that's what makes che some cheeses taste how great they do. Um, so things might look a bit scary with the cheese, but I feel like we go more with our nose for a cheese rather than our eyes because. If you actually think about it, cheese can look pretty gross. So yeah, so we're going to leave these for another few months. Um, so this is our old fridge. Uh, we actually got a new fridge about a month ago. I was trying to keep all of our cheeses in um, where was I keeping them? Oh, in, in boxes in the cold room. And that's great because it created a kind of humid environment in the boxes, but I was getting too many cheeses to have boxes for. So decided to repurpose the old fridge. Uh, we carried it out here. It's actually plugged in um, and I just keep it humid by spraying a salt spray around on the inside of it. Um, I don't measure the humidity, I just can tell if you know there's a bit of condensation on the walls of the fridge and stuff um, because fridges generally are drying environments so you need to keep the humidity up but funnily enough even though this fridge is on I'm pretty sure it's keeping it warmer <laughs> than it is out here because it's getting to kind of minus 10 out here which would be too cold for the cheeses so it's regulating the temperature very well um, and this so far has been the best container to keep the cheeses in to age them and they've been the most consistent and the least funny looking moulds uh, developing in here when it's been switched on and kept at the warmest fridge temperature as in the lo lowest setting. Alright so we've headed out to try and find a few sort of scrap materials that we know we can try and make a hay feeder from for the goats. We've even got an abacus to play with. Great, <laughs> just what every goat needs. So we're going to try and make this uh, new goat feeder. Yep, so we found this old baby crib uh, with an abacus on it that Mandy is desperately trying to learn how to count on. <laughs> so that's what we're going to use. So um, next thing is just to bang up on the wall really. <laughs> I'm going to watch my head in here. Rock, paper, scissors. One, two, three. Right, I'll go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes.
So are you happy with the new hay feeder? I am. We have some concerns, don't we? Yeah, one thing we're just going to add on either after lunch or now. We're just going to put some, you can see Myrtle demonstrating here. She's just testing out the strength of uh, this part of it, which I'm assuming isn't actually that strong. We're going to put some chicken wire here to stop them from coming up. We just want them to eat feed from underneath. That's the idea. That's quite a natural movement for them as well. So they're browsers. They like to, you know, eat trees and put their heads up to eat, you know, rather than eating off of the ground so much. And that's why this works quite well, having something that they reach up to eat from. No, it's great. Satisfied. So it solves a lot of problems. Pretty good considering yeah. it's all made from totally, rubbish that yeah. we found lying around the farm. Yeah, farm heat challenge. And I'm sure we'll edit it over time as yeah. well. I think that's the thing. We're always learning and so we don't want to go and buy lots of new materials and do something really, you know, perfect and fancy and then realise it's not quite right for us, you know. So we're just mm. always adapting things and this allows us to just bodge something together, try yeah. it for a while. And if something really does stick, then maybe we make it stronger. Just giving uh, Mandy's teats an Epsom salt bath. Um, Epsom salt's a kind of form of magnesium um, and that's absorbed through the skin actually better than if you were to even take it orally. Um, so, I'm doing this and I'm hoping that the increase in magnesium in, you know, Epsom salts are harmless as you know you put them in your bath um, and things, so these are just for the bath and um, it will mean that not only will she get a bit relaxed uh, but it will start to hopefully break it down. Um, is, that your, is that your research or your hope? Well, uh, no, I've never heard of anyone doing this. Yeah. Um, but I know that um, humans use um, forms of magnesium for kidney stones, which are calcium deposits. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that, yeah, magnesium kind of can affect the level of calcium. And so I figured that the least harmful method that I could try of in, you know, introducing magnesium into her teat was Epsom salts. Because, so. Um, just having a go. It's not intrusive and it's not going to hurt her, so there's no harm. Mm. In fact, hopefully it will just be nice anyway. So. I wonder if this is going to make her need to pee. You know, if you like put someone's hand in hot, isn't that meant to be?